Hi there and welcome back. Let us look at this process here which is known as carbonylization of dimethyl ether. We simply are going to be reacting dimethyl ether DME with carbon monoxide to produce methyl acetate. Now on this process simulation that you're looking at here we will be going and doing step by step of each process. It's a very short process um, and might need to be modified if you want to but this is how I would go about it if I was asked to create such a process. So the first step is to react dimethyl ether and carbon monoxide at ambient conditions. At this condition our DME is liquid but our carbon monoxide is in its gas phase so if you wanted to react this to at gas phase you can just change the condition of DME just aligning it with its gas phase just aligning it with its phase change diagram just to know that which parameters it becomes gas phase but I decided to go along and just react this to at ambient conditions so my DME is liquid and my carbon dioxide it's a gas so I will be mixing this two together after they mix together the conditions or the temperatures didn't change much as you can see there my pressure is still 5 bar and my temperature is 20 degrees celsius now the next step to favor our reaction we are going to increase the temperature so that i'm going to use there a heat exchanger this heat exchanger here will simply be increasing the temperature from 50 from 23 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius and at 20 bar as you can see that the mass balances the stream that's going in the inlet stream and the outlet stream are equal now the next step will be to go to our reactor the gibbs reactor for the gibbs reactor we are going to simply react our carbon monoxide and DME in order to produce methyl acetate. This process is known as carbonylization of DME because we are reacting DME with carbon monoxide. After this two react together, they will move to a separator whereby they will be separated into 100% of methyl acetate and the remaining components which is DME and carbon monoxide. This too can be recycled back into the stream there. Um, due to my mass not balancing, I introduced a splitter just to purge just some few amounts of some products there and recycled back the wanted byproducts into the system using mixer 2. Now let's look at our equipment per individual. The first equipment here that was used was a mixer and my mixer will be mixing at very low pressures here. If you wanted to you could have specified your own desired pressure. Another equipment that we can look at here it's the heat exchanger. For this heat exchanger I only specified the flash type for it to be temperature and the pressure here. So the outlet temperature that is expected it's 50 degrees Celsius and the outlet pressure that we expect on the heat exchange will be 20 bar because we are using a gibbs reactor with aspen you are not expected to specify the reaction type that will be taking place here but if you had to you will just simply just specify that one mole of carbon monoxide reacts with one mole of dme to produce one mole of methyl acetate but yes for the gibbs reactor we are simply going to specify the temperature to be 100 degrees and our pressure there at 20 bar so we are simply telling gibbs reactor at which conditions our reaction will be taking place another the equipment that we can look at here it's the separator for the separator all we have to do is specify one of our outlet streams i chose to make the bottom stream which is ma to be a hundred percent of methyl acetate another equipment we can look at here it's the splitter split one now for the splitter it allows you to specify some few parameters i chose to go with the split fraction and for stream four we will be separating or we want a fraction of 0.9 compared to that of stream five so this means for from one or hundred percent more fraction we want 90 percent to go to stream four and the remaining 10 to go to stream five this i simply included it to help with my mass balance but of course we still have our unwanted products in our stream five that might have to be recycled back into the system so if you are considering following this procedure you might want to amend some few things to cater it to meet specific engineering sense in sense that as engineers we do not waste anything we always make sure we reuse recycle and make use of every product so do let me know what you think about this video i hope it's very helpful but till next time bye